I made a video several, I don't know, it's a while back, about how affairs are addictive, how they form and they become addictive. And I want to take that apart a little bit today because along with that addiction, and people say, well, you can be addicted to something, but you give it up. It's not really that easy because what happens is things, certain cues, certain rationalizations keep it in place. Just as if you were an alcoholic or a drug addict, there's certain things you tell yourself, the lies of the addiction, that actually keep you stuck there. So I want to go through the lies of cheating. The lies of cheating are actually the rationalizations. And with all addictions, what the addiction does to keep it in place is it fills the mind with thoughts of of lies or you know basically rationalizations so that the person won't feel as guilty because let's face it if you really were honest with what you were doing when you were cheating you would understand that the whole relationship was built on a platform of lies and secrecy and not only are you lying to the person you're having the affair with you're lying to your ex to your spouse who isn't an ex yet and you're lying to yourself. Sometimes you're even lying to your children because an addiction doesn't care who the lie is said to. It, it's not moral. It's just basically giving these thoughts to you so you can overcome the guilt and the shame that you would have to face if it weren't for these. So the first of these rationalizations is you become convinced that the affair is justified. I've seen this when many partners will tell me, well, my partner doesn't want to have sex anymore. Or my partner doesn't desire me anymore. My partner talks rude to me or insults me. None of those things are good, but they should be addressed honestly and openly in therapy rather than behind a person's back with a cheating uh, partner that you're now forming a relationship with. Secondly, the affair meets real emotional needs. This is another rationalization that we tell ourselves we deserve a real emotional relationship. Whether or not you deserve it, I don't know, you create it in a healthy relationship. And that takes sacrifice and that takes a lot of hard work on your personal level, but it doesn't require you to cheat. The affair acts as a, sed a sedative for depression and despair. Let's say you're someone who has a chronic depression and you end up having an affair. You may convince yourself that this has become part of your therapy. So basically, you, you tell yourself, I'm a better partner to my spouse because I cheat with this other person. That's a huge lie. It's a rationalization. It is coming from the addiction itself of the affair. Believing the affair will have beneficial effects on the marriage. So many partners will tell me that actually I think I appreciate my partner more. I think I'm better a partner because I'm not hounding them for sex anymore or whatever. Or maybe my sex life came alive when I started having an affair. These are all rationalizations. And once again, if you were honest about what's going on, you would not do it this way. You may talk to your partner, you may end up in therapy, but you would not go back behind their back and have an affair. Experiencing highly pleasurable and erotic inner fantasies. It's this part that keeps the affair really locked in because the pleasure is much greater than what you had before. And not only that, the pleasure is greater than the pain you would have to face if you were honest with your partner, with yourself, and with this new person you're having the affair with. A powerful desire to repeat the experience. Once again, the affair is dictating this through the addiction. It's basically doing things to your brain chemistry, raising your serotonins, raising your endorphins, then dropping your serotonins, and this pattern becomes part of the addiction. So the words you hear are, I need this, I need this, or something bad is going to happen to me. It's all about sexual pleasure. Sexual pleasure 
Once again, it's about the pleasure that you are deriving from the intimacy with this person you're having an affair and you will rationalize that by saying you deserve that 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 is a human need well it's not a human need it's a human pleasure it's a human desire but once again the way you're doing it is there's nothing honest about it it's built on lies and it, you wouldn't want it done to you um feeling feelings of guilt and betrayal weaken so once the affair is in full bloom, then the rationalizations are telling you it's really not that bad. You're just, you're just having a physical relationship with a friend. These are the thoughts of the actual affair addiction, but it isn't true. It's just being fed to you through your mind and the thoughts are keeping everything calm down and at bay. Lies, deceptions, and duplicity become essential elements in the maintenance of the affair. So in other words, at some point you wake up and you realize there is no part of this that's honest. I'm living a double life and both lives now are based on lies that I am telling that I'm aware of. And the last one, experiencing a heightened sense of reality. This is, you feel as though you're seeing things for the first time very clearly. The colors are vivid. The, everything you see makes more sense. Once again, this is because of the brain chemistry changes and the endorphins. What I'm gonna tell you is these rationalizations will continue for quite some time. Once you get caught or once you reveal the truth to someone, then everything's going to become start crashing down. The only way out of an affair is to get to a point where you no longer want to lie, where you are willing to face the pain you caused, not only to the person you're having the affair with, your partner, your family, and yourself. Until you are ready to deal with that pain, you will continue and something catastrophic will happen. They will find out. And then at that point, you'll have less of an opportunity to make it right, to salvage what you can of your marriage and to understand that what you're having with this other person is based on deception and lies and those don't last.